Google's chief scientist, Jeff Dean, earlier this year, said that it will soon be possible for AI to match the skills of a junior engineer and that it could happen within the next year. Sam Altman said during the Snowflake Summit in 2025 that you hear people talk about how it's their job now to assign work to a bunch of agents, look at the quality and figure out how it fits together. And it sounds a lot like how they work with a team of still relatively junior employees. And according to Goldman Sachs, the unemployment rate for 20 to 30 year olds in tech has risen by nearly three percentage points since early 2024. This is over four times the increase in the overall jobless rate. While this is still a small share of the overall US labor market, they say, we estimate that generative AI will eventually displace six to 7% of all US workers. So is this really happening? Well, there are some differing opinions too. The CEO of GitHub, Thomas Domk, said last month that young engineers frequently bring in fresh perspectives and are in fact more likely to be early adopters of AI. They're not gonna be replaced by it, but rather the ones using it the most out of any employees at the company. And in fact, that same Goldman Sachs research article we were just talking about said AI causing unemployment is unlikely. And a big reason for this is because tech creates new jobs and approximately 60% of US workers today are actually in occupations that didn't even exist in 1940. So 85% of employment growth is from brand new job creation. Even last week, Amazon's cloud chief, AWS CEO Matt Garman, proclaimed that replacing junior employees with AI is quote, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And this is from AWS, you know, the biggest cloud provider in the world. His argument is that it would be extremely damaging for long-term talent development and that juniors are in fact the least expensive employees and the most eager to adopt AI, just like the GitHub CEO said. If you eliminate these eager new employees, what happens to your company in 10 years? What happens to that experienced talent? You're all of a sudden in a drought. He also cautioned that it may change the way that learning is needed in tech and that specializing in one area for decades is maybe no longer the most viable or, or valuable career path. He instead says that educators should teach how do you think and how do you decompose problems, which I strongly agree with. In my own experience, uh, my favorite courses in engineering school always gave open book tests. And what these tests were like, um, essentially you could bring in anything you wanted, your own notes, calculators, even the textbooks in most cases. I even remember one professor let us bring in previous year's exams that we could use as a reference while we were writing the current year's exam. And the reason was uh, he was so confident that the new questions he had written required you know, new thinking and new critical reasoning that we couldn't just blindly copy from existing problem sets. Maybe the same techniques and tools could be used, but just like in the real world, when you know, you're know you given a job and you're assigned a task, your boss doesn't say, oh, and by the way, don't use a calculator when you're crunching these numbers from here. Oh, by the way, don't use Google for this because you know we want it just to be from your brain. Like, no, that would be crazy. Uh, no company in their right mind would try to limit the access of information that an employee has to do their jobs. Companies, businesses, they care about problem solving. And with that, knowing how to think and decompose problems is the most valuable skill you can have. I can't tell you the number of times at work that I've said yes to something that someone has asked of me, but in the back of my mind, I have no idea how to do the thing that they just said, Alex, can you go do this? And then I'm frantically Googling and, and trying to learn as much as I can after the meeting. But the reality is if, if you have kind of confidence in those abilities to learn how to learn, then you can tackle almost anything. And AI doesn't quite have that learn how to learn mentality yet um, from you know any metric that I've seen. Jobs don't pay people to simply look things up, data in a book or on the internet, which is what AI is great at right now. They pay for people to take that data, analyze it, synthesize it, collate it, reason it, you know, apply labels to it, and then ultimately solve some kind of problem or business need. I would often joke during interviews that I think one of my biggest skills was being really good at Googling. And I think that's taken me actually really far in, in learning, getting my engineering degree and doing tech just by being able to effectively find things. It's surprisingly a skill that not a lot of people have. I think AI is leveling the playing field in a lot of ways, but there's still going to be skills and techniques involved in how do you search things up? So is AI taking jobs away from junior employees or employees in general? Well, as always, we've heard opinions from both sides. The, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. AI is not going to replace everyone tomorrow or even this year, despite what people say. But I don't think we can also, on the flip side, ignore the productivity improvements that we're seeing from AI. There's going to be an effect in the industry, but it's not going to replace engineers completely now or anytime in the near future. I do think AI will reduce the number of engineers or people needed to solve a very specific problem. So does that mean that companies are all of a sudden going to need less people? No, I would say, in fact, it's the opposite. All that means is that 
companies will want to solve more problems more quickly now. If you look back to the Industrial Revolution, it didn't really reduce the number of employees that companies had uh, in aggregate. It just made them way more productive and they were able to pump out more widgets, more products, solve more problems per employee if you normalize that metric than ever before. And I think AI is much more akin to that than, you know, something that's going to completely take over all of our lives and give us all universal basic income. I use AI at my job almost every day at this point. It's a tool I use. It's it's similar to Google on steroids. It can save me time by compiling things and creating things. It's really useful when it ties into your own company's uh, data and docs because now all of a sudden you can find things a lot easier, which is always the bane of existence at any company I've worked at, just finding documents or finding kind of esoteric tribal company knowledge. But that being said, it 100% can't do my job. If I blindly used AI, I would probably get fired pretty quickly because the output it produces doesn't have context. It, it's simply regurgitating things that it's either seen before or has access to. If there wasn't a human in the loop to correct it, to take the parts of it that are useful and discard the parts that aren't useful, it wouldn't be able to do anything. And the argument could be made, hey, you know, this tool allows your staff to be X percent more efficient. The X is up to debate. But so does Google and, you know, so did Stack Overflow back in the day, rest in peace. But if you want to argue that, you know, yeah, look at all the layoffs right now, the industry's a bloodbath. Well, I think there's a lot of other reasons for that. You can check out my other video for more details, is tech dying? But the <clears throat> TLDR is that, or the TLDW, I should say, is that the industry is still growing um, in terms of jobs and revenue. The difference is the number of CS grads has almost more than doubled in recent years. There was a, a big draw to the industry. It was seen as, you know, sexy, appealing, high paying, and a lot of grads want, decided they wanted to go and study that. And unfortunately, the computer science program quality at most universities has not improved. And it wasn't even that great to begin with in a lot of ways. So these boot camps and some of these colleges, I'm sorry to say, have probably ripped you off. The efficiency in software development process has also been improved recently with cloud and DevOps flows. Even in the last 10 years, it's almost incredible what has been automated. Most developers don't really have the experience in building resilient hardened systems. So it's quite hard to find those candidates. And the biggest thing is that offshoring is really accelerating. Part of the reason why offshoring is accelerating was because in 2017, a, a big tax break for R&D was removed. So many companies who were previously hiring devs like crazy and could write off their salaries as research and development expenses could no longer do that. So they would look for cheaper labor elsewhere. Positive there is that this, this tax code was reinstated a few months ago. So try to avoid all of the doom and gloom that you see on social media or maybe videos similar to this. Engineering tech, specifically software engineering, is still one of the happiest and most fulfilling careers based on the data in 2025. Resume.io found that 87% of software developers reported being very happy in their jobs, which was the highest of any profession they surveyed. Career.io analyzed nearly 750,000 job ratings and found software developers were among the most satisfied six-figure or higher earners, and they had a median salary of $130,000. Market.biz reported that 74% of tech professionals worldwide are satisfied with their jobs, which was one of the highest of any industry. I'll close this video out by saying that, again, I think learning how to learn is by far the most important skill anyone in software, tech, or any industry can obtain. That's not just in the AI context, but for anything you do. And I don't think, even if AI improves tremendously over the next year, five years, 10 years, that that is ever going to go away. I think AI is gonna be a tool that you have to use, so don't shy away from it, but also don't look at it as this boogeyman that's gonna come and take everyone's jobs or eliminate the need for junior devs. Focus on learning how to learn, building up that critical reasoning and understanding how to decompose hard problems. Don't be afraid uh, about saying yes to things that you don't know how to do immediately. That will take you extremely far in your career. These are some of my thoughts and experiences. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you have a great day.